you know, it's been a while since I've done a woodworking video, so I spent the day in the shop yesterday, and I put something together that's kind of interesting. But before we go into that, um, see all these rounds of redwood behind me? A lot of them are short, and it's hard to do stuff with short logs. You know, I can, I can mill up some blanks, and I came up with a couple of ideas recently. Maybe you saw it in one of my other videos, the video about when the chainsaw caught fire. Um, I, I want to show you a few things that I'm, I'm doing with this stuff because redwood is quite valuable. And um, you know, even if I mill up some shorts, there's a lot of valuable things that you can do with it. Let me show you what I can do with some stuff that uh, would otherwise be just wasted wood. So one of the first things I thought about was I need some stairs on my property. So I put some stairs up. It didn't take that long to make either. You know, probably the longest part was getting them all cut exactly the same size in my shop. But with a little bit of perseverance, I did it and then just uh, figured out what was level and put them in place. Huge difference. So we are cutting down a lot more redwoods lately for a lot of reasons. And the primary reason is this tree doesn't belong down in the urban environment. They grow too big, too fast, and they're not really durable trees. They're susceptible to a lot of diseases. These particular trees were planted in an absolutely stupid location in a tiny little planting area that was breaking it up and uh, whatever architect, landscape architect, decided to do this. Uh, what, a, what a mistake. So anyway, we get these rounds, and because I was roping them down, I was able to get them in three and four foot lengths, which are still kind of small. And, and if I put them on my mill, I'm able to get some decent sized shorts. So I was thinking about the, uh, the idea of getting these two and a half to three inch thick pieces, eight inches wide, and they turned out to be absolutely perfect for the stairs that I'm using on my property. I have a hillside property and um, I'm going to utilize as much as this as I possibly can. Maybe some stepping stones, maybe some little tabletops, maybe some cut, some rounds, but uh, we shall see. Well, let's go into the wood shop. I make a lot of my own tool handles and a lot of people ask me, why do you bother? It takes two or three hours to make a tool handle. You can just go down and buy a new one for $15 or so. So you're working for $5 an hour. Well, that's not the point. So I broke this eight pound maul and it's a, it's a tool that I use quite often. And if you go down and buy a commercial tool handle, you don't always get wood with the right, correct grain orientation. You also get a tool handle that has been lacquered. And the shape of the tool handle is very, very consistent for the average person. Well, I'm six foot four. So a lot of times the tool handles that I can buy, just a little bit too short for me. You know, if I have a little bit longer swing, you know, to hit those pieces of wood, or if I'm axing out roots in the ground, I might want just a little bit longer handle. I also like to modify the, the feel of the handle. You know, this has got a little bit on the end here to keep my hand from slipping all the way off. My hands are a size that I like to really feel the handle so that it fits me. And that, that's very important because there's days that I'll be working with a tool like this all day long or even just for an hour or two. It makes a huge difference. Now the plastic handles or the fiberglass handles, oh, I hate those things. They don't have the same kind of flex. They don't have the same kind of feel. This is a nice piece of ash. Ash wood has a good spring to it. 
Um, it's lightweight but strong and provided I don't miss and hit the wood so that this thing goes over the piece of wood and breaks the handle, this should last a long time. Now I've made a lot of axe handles and tool handles over the years, and some of them are very unique. This handle right here is very long. It's a very, very long axe, and why would you say, why would you want an axe that long? Well, one of the things I do in some of my jobs is, is I'll go along feeling the edge of the sidewalk and probe for roots that are ready to break the sidewalk. And if I do that, I just kind of feel along, and when I see one, I can take a nice swing and just kind of move on. And that's a fairly simple procedure for me to do, but if I'm bending over because I've got a shorter axe, after a while my back just starts aching. So for me, a little bit longer handle makes a lot of sense. You know, sometimes I've got tools that are particularly beautiful. I took a bit of time and I cleaned up this axe head, polished it up, so I went ahead and I found a piece of wood that's got some high figure in it, and Honestly, this is an axe I don't really want to use. I just had a lot of fun with it. But it's a, it's a homemade handle as well. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find a handle. You know, the double bit axes, you don't find those too often because not a lot of people use them anymore. So I went ahead and I made one for this double bit axe. As well as this double bit axe. I took a little bit more time with this one. And this is one that I would use because it has the right taper, it has the right feel. My hands slide all the way through it. There's no lacquer on it, it's just oiled and waxed. And I prefer that. I think that that's the smart way of doing it. This is razor sharp, so I keep tape on there just so I don't hurt myself. What do you use a double bit axe for? Well, it's if you want to cut down a tree and when one bit gets dull, you switch it over. You've got two bits to work on. This is your bit. And you can keep a nice sharp axe all day long. You wouldn't use this for grubbing out roots. You wouldn't use this for working in the ground or, or cutting out stumps. This is primarily for felling trees. And honestly, with chainsaws, I don't do that too much. Every once in a while, for fun, I like to do it. And it just kind of gives me a little bit of, I don't know, feeling like I'm going back in time. I make a lot of hammer handles as well. And to be able to fit something to your hand means that that tool becomes your tool. Uh, engrave or burn my name into the, the handle and uh, maybe sometimes put a few tooling marks just to make it specifically my tool. So I don't like to loan those tools out, but if anybody inadvertently picks it up, they're going to know that it's not theirs. Anyway, back to work. I'm going to get the uh, sander out now and bring it up to uh, at least 220. You get it really, really smooth and it slides through your hand. I'll oil it up really good so it penetrates the wood 
and then finally I'll wax it real nice. Never do I use lacquer. I don't like any kind of film finish. But as you're working it and sanding it, you've got to stop consistently and feel the handle for any little sharp spots, any little nicks, any spots where maybe it's not completely rounded and there's a little bit of an edge. And I can feel one right now. But you keep working it and run your hands up and down. You know, you could keep working it. And you've got to fit the head accurately to the tool. I did all that uh, with the spoke shave, this tool right here. I marked it off. I put the head on there, marked it off with a pencil. I used a rip saw and cut it down. I cut down in the middle with a, a rip saw as well. And uh, once I put it on there, I'll put a nice big solid hardwood wedge in there to force this apart. And uh, hopefully it'll last a long time. Anyway, those are my thoughts on making my own tool handles. You should try it.